Hi guys, Marcy here with KGB Style and I'm here with another sew along for my Fall Know Me pattern ME 2054. This sew along is for View B, my cargo pan. And when I tell you these pants have been rotating weekly in my wardrobe since I made them, I tell you no lie. They're so versatile, they're so comfortable, and they're so cool, you can literally wear them with anything. Cargo pants are in. Cargo pants have been trending for a while now. I don't know when they'll stop, but I'm down for the ride. Let me tell you a little bit about these pants. They are my favorite pair of pants. They are super fly. They have cargos in the front, cargos in the back, flat pockets in the front, and flat pockets in the back. This cool tie detail at the ankle and a super fly wrap style zipper fly in the front. Now, one quick addition to this pattern, I will be adding a zipper fly facing to my pants in the sew along. There was not one originally printed with the uh, pattern, so I did create one and there will be a link in the description below and you can print it out for yourself. If you do not want to add the um, zipper fly facing, you can follow the instructions to the pattern as they are already written, but if not, go ahead and get it downloaded and print it and let's get started. For this sew along, we'll be focusing on view B, which are the cargo pants. You can always refer to the back of your pattern for suggested fabrics, notions, sizes, and measurements. If you are new to sewing, don't forget to review your pattern instructions for pattern markings, cut and layouts, and pieces that need to be cut for this sew along. Please note that for the left zipper facing add-on, you may need to add one and a half inch in length to piece 28. Let's get started. So before we start sewing, you should have already applied your markings and applied your interfacing to all the relevant pieces. Let's go ahead and grab our piece number 12, which is the right front. And through the large dot, we are going to stitch to reinforce and clip right here. We're gonna start about one inch from the dot, releasing our needle, and dropping our foot. And then we're just gonna sew through and then about an inch on the other side also. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna clip to the dot making sure not to cut through the thread, but close to the dot. Now you're gonna take piece 14, which should already be interfaced, and with right sides together, we're gonna to pin the fly facing to the right front matching symbols, and then we're gonna to stitch to the large dot. Also match your notches. Make sure your edges are even, notches are matched, and your dots are matching too. Let me pull that out just a little bit. So now we're gonna take this to the machine and stitch from the large dot to the top edge. I'm gonna stitch from the back to make sure that I get that dot. <clears throat> Don't 
to get the back stitch. I'm going to go ahead and trim my seam allowance. and understitch my fly facing. I'm gonna turn the fly facing to the inside and then press after I understitch. So now you should have finished your right front fly, understitched and turned it, turned it um, to the inside and pressed. We're gonna grab our left front, which is piece number 13, and with right sides facing, we're going to match those dots and match the center front notches, having the edges even, go ahead and pin the left front to the right front between the large dots, like so. And we're going to take it to the machine and stitch between the large dot and the notch, which is right here. Make sure to stop at the large dot. Next, we're going to turn the left front edge along the center front above the dot, and then we're going to press. Then you want to place your zipper closed face up under the left front, match the top edges, getting it close to that zipper near the zipper teeth. And it's supposed to stop at the red dot. If you need to trim your zipper, you can do so. And then we're going to pin it in place. I'm switching to pins for this. Now we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to switch our foot to our zipper foot so that we can stitch, edge stitch close to the zipper teeth between the top and the red dot, Stop, stopping at the red dot. Now we're just going to edge stitch close to the zipper teeth. Don't forget to back stitch.
So this pattern was not printed with a left zipper fly facing. However, I do like to cover my left zipper with a facing, so I created one. If you'd like to add the facing to the left zipper, I'll provide the link below for the free printout for this add-on. I've already cut mine out. And remember, if you make any rise adjustments to your waistline, you will have to adjust the length of the facing also. You can always test the length to be sure it fits your size. I ran out of fabric for um, this facing, so I cut my facing out of a brown fabric I had on hand to coordinate, but no worries. We're gonna go ahead and apply your inner facings and your markings to the zipper facing. Now I made my markings on the front, but I think I'm gonna need them on the back. So let's just make a little mark on the back for that dot there. And with right sides together, we're gonna to pin the short side of the facing Matching up the raw edges and around the curve. We're going to leave the long side open and take it to the machine and stitch. ahead and trim your edges and then we'll turn it right side out. Now that the edges are trimmed, we're going to go ahead and turn the zipper facing right side out. And go ahead and give it a press. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and base the edges of the zipper facing and then we'll continue to apply it to our pants. So now we're gonna add the facing to the back of the left front. Along the zipper raw edge, you're gonna place the raw edges of the facing, lining it up, matching the dots at the bottom. Then we're gonna pin it in place. Now you can take it to the machine and base stitch it close to the edge right over the previous stitching. So from the back, we're gonna fold back that left fly facing and I'm just gonna clip it out of the way so that it doesn't get in the way. And we're gonna take the free edge of that right front facing and pin it to the remaining zipper pin or clip. Then we're gonna take it to the machine and stitch only the back facing of the right front and the zipper close to the zipper teeth. So using your zipper foot, you're going to stitch the zipper, the right side of the zipper to the right fly facing, making sure not to catch the front of the right fly. We just have these two pieces here, your right 
fly facing and the right zipper and stitch close to the zipper teeth. Make sure to back stitch. Okay, so I went ahead and finished the ends of my uh, right fly facing there neatly, and I'm just going to pin it there so it doesn't move. You can go ahead and bring your left fly back to the front, and we're going to flip it over. Now with the front unzipped, we're going to turn the fly facing down and baste the upper edges of the facing and the right front together. You can pin it so that it stays in place. Now with right sides facing, grab your pant front and piece number 15, which is the side front, and we're gonna match up the notches and the raw edges and pin it together. All right, so we're gonna take it to the machine and stitch it, and then we'll trim it, finish the seam, and press it. We'll do that for both sides for the side front. I went ahead and pressed my seams to the front on both sides and we're going to go ahead and top stitch that seam down the front. Now that we've completed the top stitching on the front of our pants, we're going to move to the back of our pants. We're going to grab our side back pieces, piece 17 and piece 18, and with right sides together, we're going to match up the notches and pin the two pieces together. down the seam and we'll take it to the machine and stitch it just like we did the front seam of our pants. Okay so I went ahead and stitched the back seam of the pants and now I'm pressing the seam towards the center
before taking it to the machine and top stitching. You're going to do this for both sides of your back pants panels. Okay, so now you should have both of your back pants panels uh, top stitched and we're going to set these two pieces aside and move on to our front pockets. Grab piece 16. We'll do one at a time. And we're going to make a 5 eighths of an inch narrow hem on the slanted upper edge of the front pocket here and then we'll turn under the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on the front and lower edges of the pocket folding the corners in before we press so let's go ahead and do that So we're going to go ahead and turn under the seam allowance on the edges of the pockets. I went ahead and finished my, my um, edges of my pockets so that they'll be clean. And we're just going to fold over 5 eighths of an inch and give it a press. I'm going to pin it in place to secure it. And we're going to do this for both pockets. Now let's grab the front of our pants and we are going to take our pockets and with right sides up, we're going to pin the front pocket to the front having pressed edges along the pocket line, matching the notches. and the small dots. Now I'm going to switch to my pins for this one. Okay, so we're going to take it to the machine and we're going to top stitch the front and lower edges and then we'll baste the side and the upper edges together. Do this for both pockets on your front pants.
Okay, so we have top stitched the pocket down and we've also basted the top edge and the side edge of the pockets. So now we're gonna construct our gusseted um, cargo pockets. If you have created my uh, No Me Early Spring pattern, then you may be familiar with these pockets. We're gonna um, go ahead and take our piece 20, which you should already have reinforced uh, the dots on the gusset. There's four dots. Go ahead and stitch through the dots on both sides and then clip right to the dot like I've done here. And then once you've done that, you can grab your piece 19 and with the right sides together, pin the gusset piece 20 to piece 19, turning at the corners where you clipped the gusset. Now this is the same way you're gonna construct the rest of your gusseted pockets. So I'm gonna show you um, how to do this one and then you can go ahead and create the other ones in the same manner. So we're gonna take our pocket to our machine and baste and stitch through the small dots, pivoting at the small dots at the same time. Do that now. Okay, so I went ahead and trimmed and finished um, the seams of the pocket. I'm going to edge stitch before I edge stitch. I'm just gonna give the seam a press inward. Just to make the um, corners a little neater. before I edge stitch. Okay, so I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm gonna edge stitch the pocket. Now we're going to turn the gusset to the inside and press. Then open up the gusset at the upper edge and turn in a fourth of an inch on the upper edge and press. Then turn it in again on the fold line We're gonna press it down. Okay, 
And I'm just gonna secure it with my clips. And then you're gonna take it to the machine and base the fold close to the pressed edge. Now let's turn in 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on the side and lower edges of the gusset and press. I'm also going to go ahead and finish these edges with my serger before I apply them to the front of my pants. Okay, so now that that's completed, my pocket is ready to apply to the front of my pants. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab the front pant section. And we'll start with the left side. And I have my pins here. I'm going to pin the pocket to the upper pocket line and lower pocket to the lower pocket lines of the front of the pants. Now you have the upper pocket here. Um, after you've done this, you will complete your lower pockets and your back pockets and you'll do them in the same manner. You can take it to the machine and edge stitch the side and lower edges to the front of the pant. So we completed our first upper pocket um, for the front of the pant using piece 19 and gusset 20. You're going to use your uh, gusset 23 and pocket 22 for the front bottom of the pants. And when you get to the back of the pant, you'll use piece 19 and piece 20 gusset again. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the last five of the gusseted pockets. And then we'll go ahead and do the back top pockets.
In order to create the pleat on the pocket, we're going to bring the large dots together and then pin them in place to hold. Then we'll stitch a triangle at the upper edge of the pocket through all the layers. Okay, so now we're going to construct our flaps for our upper pockets. This would be piece 21, pattern piece 21. And there should be eight of these cut out and four of them are interfaced. We're going to take one interface piece and one uninterfaced piece. And with right sides together, we're going to place one on top of the other and go ahead and pin the sides. Make sure you're matching the dots and the raw edges. And we're gonna leave the upper edge open here and we're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna stitch it around the edges. Don't forget to back stitch. Now you can trim the corners and the edges and turn it right side out. I'm going to use my turner and my pressing tool to turn it and get those crisp edges. Complete that for the other three set of upper pocket flaps. Once you finish sewing your pocket flaps together, you're going to top stitch and then baste the raw edges. We're going to grab our front pant and apply our flaps to our upper pockets. You also want to apply the flaps to the back upper pockets also. So grab your flap and with right sides facing, line up the raw edge of the pocket flap to the seam line and match up those dots. Go ahead and pin it in place. You're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna stitch the pocket flap down between the dots and then trim the flap seam allowance to about a quarter of an inch. Once you trim the seam of your flap, you can go ahead and turn the flap down. And we're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna top stitch right there where you fold it. Do this for the rest of your pockets and you can go ahead and apply the flaps to your bottom front pockets also. Okay, so at this point, we should have finished all of our gusseted park pockets or floating park pockets, whatever you want to call it. And we're actually going to move on to our back, upper back pocket, the flat pocket that goes on our bottom. And this one is going to be your flat po pocket. And you have two of those. It's piece number 25. And I went ahead and I finished the edges 
of it and the bottom edge of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn in a fourth of an inch on the upper edge of this back pocket. And then we're gonna press it. Now we're gonna turn the upper edge to the outside, folding it at the fold line. This is forming the facing and I'm gonna give it a little press here. Let's hold that in place. Now we're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna stitch along the seam line on the raw edges. And then we'll trim the seam allowance in the facing area about a fourth of an inch. We're going to continue this stitch down the seam, which makes it easier for turning the, the edges in. I'll just reposition it just a little bit. trim trim that just trim the seam right there in the facing area just like that so there won't be so much bulk and then we're gonna go ahead and turn the facing to the back. I'm gonna use my turning tool to get the corners good. Turning the pocket right side out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press down the facing in those side seams and bottom seams. Go ahead and press those in. All right, now I'm gonna take it to the machine and stitch that face in close to the inner edge here. Now we're gonna take your back flat pocket and we're going to pin the back pocket along the pocket line matching the dots. I'm going to use my pins for this. And once you get this lined up and pinned, you're simply gonna take it to the machine and edge stitch between the dots and around the sides and the bottom of the pocket. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin both of my flat back pockets. Okay, so now that all of our pockets have been applied to our pants. We're gonna go ahead and finish up our remaining seams. With right sides together, we're gonna pin the front pant and the back pant together in the inner leg. And then after we pin it, we'll take it to the machine and stitch it. Remember to line up your notches and your raw edges evenly.
All right, so let's go stitch that together. And you can also finish the inner leg seams with your serger if you would like. Okay, so now that you have your inner leg stitched, we're gonna go ahead and stitch the remainder of the crotch, crotch seam. So go ahead and line up those seams, raw edges and notches in the crotch area. And go ahead and pin it. Oops. Now we're gonna stitch the rest of this crotch seam starting from the notch in the front crotch and all the way to the top of the back of the pant. Let's go do that now. So I went ahead and finished up the crotch. I um, searched the edges and I double stitched the crotch. But while we're in there, we're gonna go ahead and tack down that zipper fly that we applied um, to make sure it's good and secure. So all you need is one little stitch here. I'm just gonna stitch it sideways so that I miss that little metal part that's on the zipper, the stopper. Let's go ahead and do that. And then just turn and stitch a bit. And I'm going to clip this remaining part of the zipper off. Now with right sides together, matching raw edges and notches, go ahead and pin your front and back at the side seam. Now when you take this to the machine and stitch, there is a slit at the bottom of the cargo pant and it's marked by a dot. So you're gonna actually stop stitching at that dot and back stitch. Let me make sure that that is on the back side too. And if you haven't already finished your side seams, make sure that you finish the side seam all the way down on each side so that we can, we can hem our, our slit when the time comes with no problem. All right. All right, let's take that to the machine and give it a stitch. Now we're gonna move on to the waistband and tie. Um, let's start with number 27. This is the loop for your belt. So we're gonna fold the loop with the right sides facing in half, matching the notches. And we're gonna stitch between the small dots, leaving open the ends. So go ahead and pin it and take it to the machine and make a stitch. Once you've done that, you're gonna press the seam and you're gonna turn it. I'm just gonna turn it with my finger since it's big enough. Okay. 
And once your loop is turned, we're gonna flatten it out and press it again. All right. So I went ahead and pressed my loop, and this is where your D-rings come in. You're gonna take one end of your loop and insert them through the D-rings and close them with the wrong side of it facing just like that. Now I'm gonna take this to the machine and I'm gonna base stitch the edge of this loop. Once you base the ends together, it should look just like this. Clean the ends up a little bit. It should look just like that. Now this is gonna get added to your waistband and your belt will go through the D-rings when we attach it. Okay, so now we're going to grab your piece 26 and we're going to take that belt loop and we're going to line it up with between the dots and pin it, take it to the machine and base stitch it down to the right front waistband. Now take your tie in, which is piece number 29, and we're going to fold the tie end in half lengthwise and pin it. After you've folded it in half and pinned it, we're going to stitch it leaving the notched ends open. The notched ends are here. We're going to leave this end open and we're going to stitch along the length and at the other end of the corner. Okay, so I went ahead and turned my belt, pressed it, and I also top stitch it. It didn't call for top stitching, but I like to top stitch it. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to um, take my piece 28, the uninterfaced un piece 28, and I'm gonna pin my tie in to the uninterfaced left front waistband, which is piece 28, matching the notches and the large dots here. And I'm going to pin it or clip it in place and baste it onto the waistband. So you can take this to the machine and baste it. Now let's take our uninterfaced piece 30, which is the back of the waistband, and we're going to take our other waistbands that we have. Um, prepared and we're going to attach them right sides facing to the back waistband matching up the notches and the raw edges. Okay, so we have our piece 30 which is our back um, waistband and then we have one side with the belt and the other side with the buckle. Now let's take this to the machine and stitch the ends. With the right sides together, pin the waistband to the pants matching notches, centers, and side seams. After the waistband is completely pinned to the pant, we're going to take it to the machine and stitch it, keeping the loops and the tie ends free. Now that the waistband is attached, I'm going to press the seam upward towards the waistband. For your facing, we're going to stitch the interfaced front and back waistband sections together at the sides, just as we did the uninterfaced waistband. Go ahead and press the seams of the facing flat. Now we're going to turn in 5 eighths of an inch along the lower edge of the facing, easing in the fullness and pressing the edge up.
trim the pressed edge to 3 8 of an inch. Now go ahead and grab your pants and your facing and pin the facing to the waistband matching the seams in the centers. After you've trimmed your waistband seam, you can take it to the machine and understitch the facing. So once you've understitched your waistband facing, you're gonna turn and press. Now your directions are gonna tell you to slip stitch the pressed edge of the facing over the seam. Um, you can slip stitch it. What I like to do is put a little stay stitch on there and take it to the machine and I like to stitch in the ditch. So now that you've finished your waistband, you, you can also go ahead and apply your snap or your hook to the inside of your waistband to attach there. And we're going to move on to our ankle sl slit. And we're gonna make a five of an eighth inch narrow hem on the side opening edges. So let's go ahead and do that. and take it to the machine and stitch it close to the edge. Okay, so next, since we have our narrow hem for our slit done already, we're gonna move on to the casing for our drawstring. Okay, so take the lower edge of your pant. Let's go ahead and give that a press. And you're gonna turn under two inches and let me get my gauge so that I know that I'm doing two inches I'm just gonna fold it under two inches here and then clip it so that I know that I've done two inches we're gonna start it off like that And my ends are a little uneven because I did add some length to it and I wasn't accurate in adding the same amount of length to each piece, unfortunately. But that's okay because I'm just going to trim it and get it right. Sometimes it'd be like that, but it's fixable. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna go ahead and press under this two inch on the lower edge of the pants 
and then I'll take it to the machine and I'll baste it close to the fold edge and then we'll come back and we'll turn in a fourth on the raw edge and press it at the top. Let's do that. Okay, so now that I have the lower edge basted, we're gonna go ahead and turn under the top raw edge of the casing, about a fourth of an inch, and give it a press. Okay, so to complete the casing, I'm going to take it to the machine and baste the top edge close to the folded edge, and then I'm going to top stitch right over the basting. So after you finish the casing on your legs, let's go ahead and grab our ankle ties, and with right sides together, we're going to fold it with raw edges matching lengthwise and press. I'm gonna go ahead and secure it, secure the raw edges with clips. And after you've done that, we're gonna take it to the machine and stitch it, leaving an opening for turning in the middle of the tie. So you're gonna stitch down this edge and around the edges, and then stop midway, and then start again about right there and stitch to the end and around. Do that for both of your ties. I went ahead and clipped the corners and left the opening in the middle as I mentioned, I'm gonna use my turning tool to turn this inside out or right side out. And then I'm gonna give it a press before I feed it through the casing of my leg. So this opening you can go ahead and slip stitch. I'm actually just going to edge stitch the whole thing. Um, I'm going to take it to the machine and edge stitch the entire belt. I like to edge stitch my belt some of the times because it makes, makes it just a little bit uh, sturdier. So I'm going to go and do that. So in order to get my tie through, I am going to push my turning tool through here and like I said you can use a pin to pull it through a pin safety pin at the end to pull it through but I find this a little bit quicker so I'm gonna grab the end there and pull that through Ready? And once you get that tie in there, pull it so that even it's even on the outside. The ends are even, oh, just about even. 
and so that it does not go back through the opening of the casing, go ahead and tie a knot at your ends. And voila, you are done. Your pants are complete. Make sure you've completed the other ankle casing and tie the same way and you're done. Thank you for sewing along and supporting me on my Fall Know Me pattern. Follow me on Instagram at Kichibi Style for sewing tips, style inspo on this pattern and more. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.